like, if I can spy on somebody through this, um, is it possible that someone else might be spying on me through it? <laughs> My name is Allison Powell, and I run the LSE part of the Virtue Project. Hi, everybody. You know me from the first video. I'm from the Stakes Builder, and I work with Allison at LSE on the Virtue Project. Today, I didn't order one, but four different IoT devices. I'm so excited. Um, you know how there's a huge hype about um, fitness trackers? But we didn't in um, buy them for adults, but for kids. Because wait, 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 hold on just a second. So you can use a fitness tracker to track your kid? Pretty much. Um, they all have different functionalities. You can either track your kid, quite literally, or you can track the kind of uh, activities they do because you want to encourage them to be more active, to be more healthy. And uh, some of them have functionalities where basically parents can tick chores, house household chores and when the kids do them they get points on the app oh so it's a way i guess of like you know getting a star chart but on your phone yes can we start with this one <laughs> yes, i'm let's... so excited with about this about this box it's really cute it has happiness loves and menu on it <laughs> oh, uh, oh oh there is cheap cheap yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was cheap. <laughs> okay, so this is, is this actually a cheap product? Um, it's one of the cheap ones. Uh, it retails for £25 on Amazon. Um, this is actually an interesting thing because this watch, we should unbox it. Um, this watch comes with a functionality of a SIM card. It's quite heavy, actually. Oh, so where do you put the SIM card? Do you put it in the um, back? You open the back. Um, oops a charging cable, and a little screwdriver. It's so <laughs> cute! So you can use the screwdriver to, to take the to, back to of the watch yeah. off. Oh, okay. And uh, when, apparently, I don't know, if I didn't do it, but uh, when you open it, you can put a SIM card, a 2G SIM card. It only works with 2G. The English of the leaflet is, is a little poor, so it's not so clear to understand. But basically, what I understood is um, there are a number of, um, I shouldn't show the numbers, um, there are a list of WhatsApp and email um, numbers and addresses of um, their retailers or their representatives, and you call them and tell your coordinates to them so that they set it up remotely from their service. Okay, so to set this up, you need to WhatsApp message one of the hang gang, tell them where you're located, yeah, and what, what you, some of your personal information. Yeah, probably. Okay, well that is uh, it's an interesting choice to have to give up some privacy to have your smartwatch enabled. So once you have the smartwatch put together, what are the kinds of functionalities that it promises? So this one in particular, um, doesn't have a camera. It's it's one of the functionalities that sets um, sets it up from the other um, brand, um, but it has this um, here. It says the SOS functionality. So if you were you decide to work this with um, the SIM, and you don't have to, uh, it says on their website, um, the basically your child can get one or two numbers here. Um, to call you or other parent or other caretaker. So the SOS function allows them to, um, to call their parents in case of emergency. Um, because it has 3G, um, it also has GPS and uh, location-based uh, tracking. So the parents download the app and they can uh, apparently in real time track their kids and where their um, and their whereabouts and also do um, location fencing so that they get an alert if the kid goes further than the premises they set up as um, as the limit on the app. So is this product specifically designed for children? I mean, it has a really like bright, cool color and it, it's kind of fun looking and, you know, it's really like a little footprints on it. It's pretty cute. Um, so is it designed for kids? It is designed only for kids. At least that's what they um, they marketed as. And um, they say that the kids can track their activities, their steps 
uh, how many steps they take in a day, as well as their sleep quality. So it has a sleep, sleep tracking function as well. Actually, all of them has that function, so it's an interesting thing. And uh, it also has this uh, the chores list I mentioned. So the parents can um, do a set of chores and then they get points if they do them. Wow. So how, have you looked at the privacy policy for this product? I couldn't find any. <laughs> okay, because we know that like kids' privacy and connected life is a really big issue, and that that actually most technology companies have a really hard time like specifying, you know, how they're going to use the data of children, which has separate legal um, mm -hmm. guidelines than for adults. Mm -hmm. Are you saying there's nothing? I absolutely didn't find anything on that, and uh, I was actually quite surprised because. Um, because it has a function of this SOS function where the kids can call their parents and they might be in stress and they might, um, some you know, in case of an emergency, what happens to that kind of data? What happens to that kind of, uh, you know, distress phone uh, conversation between a parent and a child where that data is stored, how it is held, how long it is held? What happens if, uh, you know, when the child grows up, the parent says, we no longer need this and they give it away. Um, where is the data held? What happens to that data? Is it on the device? Is it in a server? If it has a if it has a um, a SIM card, maybe the data is held on the SIM card. We um, just don't know. We don't know. I think there is, some of them is held on the SIM card, but I think they also have their servers that are not um, that are not part of the the EU ecosystem because okay. uh, it's a it's a made in China product and um, the app itself when you look into it is um, not as well designed, so it's not that easy to understand how, how the data is going to be protected. This brand that produces the Hangang uh, also produces this one, so maybe we go with this one because it has a different set of functionality. This one actually has a really cute design um, on the front with a little hedgehog and a fox and a deer all sorts of natural settings, so perhaps like giving the image that, you know, you can take this to any natural setting and set Oh, it it's so cute! Oh, look at that! It has a little face on it. Oh, and some little plants, and the face has like a little headphone on it, and it's pink and purple, and it has a camera. camera. It has a and camera. And the front of the phone, which is looking right at me. Hello. <laughs> There's an FAQ listed here. Do we have anything about like where the data is held in our FAQ on this product? No, it's more about how safe is the battery? Will it ex explode or cause a fire? Can I use the watch without a SIM card? Um, and it, they say yes, but it, it will have um, some less functionalities, charging, third party testing. Is it waterproof? Um, it's apparently water resistant, but you can't immerse it in water. So yeah, no, there's no so information. So we don't know where the information goes. Similar to the previous one, the Hangang one, it has an SOS button. It is an alarm clock and it has a talk back functionality. So you can talk back to your child and they, you know, when they answer you, um, it has game and stopwatch and other kinds of um, functionalities. They mentioned that the camera and the, the voice uh, recognition, not the voice recognition, but the voice recording functionality can, can be uh, triggered automatic, um, remotely. So is that like to say that a parent could trigger the camera without the child knowing that the parent had triggered the camera? It sounds like it. So uh, they can watch um, when the kids are at school. They can watch uh, if they're really listening to their class. And if they're not, if they're uh, fiddling with the watch, for instance, they can remotely shut down the watch. Uh, through the app they have um, and again they can record their conversations without the children knowing them. Because I couldn't find any information about the security of the device I wasn't entirely um, certain if for instance spoofing is possible because this is one of the main challenges of IA2 devices as well um, that they can be easily hacked and the data uh, can be either stolen or it could be altered in a way that it looks like it's happening or everything is normal but actually it isn't so which is which can be a danger when you think that you're tracking your child but actually 
um, the thing that you're tracking is not your child, basically. <laughs> so you're saying that it's really easy because of the vulnerabilities in the software around these devices to actually spoof the location's device or to maybe spoof a recording to like patch in something that's not really on the recording? Yeah, unless unless the companies have uh, some kind of security shields built in or they have security by design uh, and they have really thought through how they're going to ensure the privacy uh, and security of their product. Like if I can spy on somebody through this, um, is it possible that someone else might be spying on me through it? Is there a privacy policy for this device that you could find? No. And there isn't a, in any information on how the company might deal with these kinds of challenges? No, not at all. Okay. What do we have here? We have a Garda, Garmin Vivo Fit Junior. Yes. This is also a kid's product. Yes, they're all. And this one is four to nine years. Ooh, unlock adventures and fun facts. And there's a frog on the side of this box. There's complete chores and earn rewards. You can have different profiles. They have different profiles for kids. Uh, you can track your screen time. You can, you can play a game. And you can motivate by competing in family challenges. So they have three different kit pictures of three oh. different kids here. Um, it looks like there's an, ad, uh, an app to download on the App Store and on Google Play. And it says on the box that you've got steps, activity timers, goals, auto sync, um, and a watch, some timers, rewards, and task timers. Like maybe timing how long you brush your teeth? Yeah. Ooh, look, it's really little. And compared to this one, it's quite a bit smaller than this pink and purple watch. Is it also lighter? It's much lighter. Okay. It's much lighter. And it's uh, got, a, got a stretchy band. It doesn't have an adjustable mm. uh, back. And it has a little dinosaur um, icon here with uh, looks like a step tracker. This product uh, to me appeared like it was more well thought through um, as to um, the kind of functionalities it is uh, given. So for instance, there's no SIM card with this one. Um, so there's no location based tracking. Uh, it's a step counter. It's a sleep uh, quality measurement device. Um, and it's, it has this fun uh, activities that the parents can load to the device through the app, but it isn't as complicated and data uh, processing heavy as the previous two devices we unboxed. The information collected and produced by the device is only, approx uh, is only an ex approximation and it's not necessarily the accurate information. The idea with all these devices that we looked at, uh, we're looking at today, is basically about quantification of everything including a child's life and including play which you know um, we imagine as something you know beyond quantification beyond numbers it's just pure joy so last one last product <gasps> yes. this one is the got the biggest box and it came with this extra plastic which is absolutely unnecessary <laughs> But yeah, it's the market leading brand. Um, you know, I could not have not ordered Fitbit. Mm -hmm. And this is Fitbit Ace. So it's basically, um, it says what it says on the tin, what it does on the tin, Fitbit for kids. Okay. Really, really got nice really packaging. Nice Look packaged. at how lovely this packaging is. It's a beautiful blue color. And then there's a little kind of box with a, with a moon and a, and a Fitbit. This one can be extended as um, the child grows. <gasps> Oh, look at that. I, actually, with this one, it would be proper, like probably okay for my wrist. Yeah, it looks really good and Ooh, uh, super look, it's sleek. It's really sleek and slim. What a pretty product. Oh, and it's got a really nice sort of textured um, band here. Uh, and the it's it's uh, it's a bit heavier than the Garmin, like it feels a little more serious. You'll get the safety instructions and limited warranty, safety wear and care. So this one, like the other products, it connects to an app. It um, connects And how an does app. it connect? Is it through Bluetooth, like the Garmin, or is it through like a SIM card, like the other products we look at, looked at? Um, it connects via Wi-Fi. The parents set up an app, and only the parents uh, basically can allow the, a child to be part of that app. 
if the child is below 13 years old because that's the consent age mm -hmm. and um, through the app the parents can see their activities their sleep quality uh, and after 13 years basically they can manage the app on their own but up to 13 years the parents download the app and they can see in terms of uh, data collection Fitbit is actually the least uh, data hungry one um, as you see, there's no camera, there's no um, sort of talkback function, there's no SOS functionality in this one. Uh, it works with a, a simple cable, I guess it's, it's here. Um, and um, one thing that was really fascinating was that it was the only device that came with a separate child data protection policy. It's not in, in the pack, but I found it online. It caught my attention that they listed all the data they actually collect um, and why they collect it and who they share it with mm -hmm. and how long they retain it and if you can delete it. So well, they have well. a linked data minimization. Yes, exactly. Okay. And general data collection, a, minim a minimization of data collected. So what kinds of data can be collected by the Fitbit ACE? Steps. Is steps. It a, does it have a GPS tracker? No. No, it does not have a GPS tracker. So there's no location data. There's no location data. Steps only. Um, sleep. Are there sleep? Okay. Are there other things like the Garmin has this idea of challenges of like movement challenges? Um, I could not find those. It's ma mainly for uh, activity tracking. So probably um, other kinds of activities than you know running. One thing I have to mention is that um, not lo not collecting location data uh, from children is a, pr a particular privacy policy for for children only. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it applies to their all products, but this is their decision for um, Fitbit Ace. And another thing um, I should mention is that um, parents can delete the data um, and basically um, they just need to inform Fitbit that they, they no longer want um, their data to be stored and that's, that's a very good um, assurance. So if you were an adult, let's say, who really didn't want to have location data collected on your activity tracker, could this be a product that you might want to choose since it doesn't collect location data? It's hard to say. I know these devices are so um, attractive and appealing because they're all colorful and they're so nicely designed. Um, it is still a data collecting device. It is perhaps not collecting location, but it's collecting personal information. And um, Fitbit says that they anonymize data before sharing with third parties. But uh, we know that um, even anonymization, when you have a mass level of data that can be um, that can be accumulated over time um, and based on you know certain characteristics can be actually identifiable. So um, there is so, that danger always. We've seen a huge range of devices from devices that might be remotely triggered um, and that collect things like you know visual facial data of children without necessarily having clarity about where it's stored. We have data that have that has a, a sort of SIM card in it that is constantly um, connecting. Um, we have devices that are um, uh, Bluetooth enabled, and so possibly we know Bluetooth has weaknesses as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, may well have some uh, some security issues. And then we have what appears to be a very well designed device, but as you say, that is still collecting really personal information. And I think this raises a lot of questions about our own habits as adults of collecting data about yeah. our lives and using this to reflect on our lives and whether we should be in some ways imposing these kind of like data collection practices and um, intimate sensing on our children. One of the common things that parents say is that is to keep their children safe because they want to make sure that uh, either they're fit or they want to know where they are. They want to make sure that um, they're safe and they can keep hold of them. And that's a perfectly understandable um, sentiment. But at the same time, uh, I guess the point is to have a bit more critical thinking around um, what this data, what this data is going to do, and what this device is going to do, both in terms of um, the security and the, the privacy of the data, but also the privacy of the child as well. Well, having a child uh, who's holding on to a device that can be remotely triggered 
by their parents or perhaps by someone else, I can, underst I can understand the desire to protect your children. But I also wonder if these devices aren't introducing other kinds of risks mm -hmm. um, just through their very design. Thank you everyone for watching. This was the second unboxing video here at Virtue Channel. And um, if you have any comments, please uh, write them down below. And we'll see you on the third video. Thank you. Bye. Bye.